where the first net came out. It's Monday the 15th of June. Um, nothing else yet, obviously the guys will hang around a bit to see if more pockets come up. There were, there's shoals of sods all the way from here to Port Edward. The, this morning there were also shoals already at Port Edward and they scattered all over the show. So it's just being a matter of being in the right place at the right time. But we'll hang around here for a couple of minutes and see Otherwise, I think uh, we'll shoot up to, uh, to Happy Wanderers and maybe put a bait out there and hope for the souls to come past. Also, just a tip to the guys, when, you, when you're going to drone or look for those big sharks, pick, pick a spot like this where it's a good chance of landing them, Happy Wanderers, places like that. Um, stay away from the rocky areas and even points is very difficult unless you've got experience in landing them there in the right gear to do that. Probably the most hit and miss season when it comes to saltwater fishing is the annual sardine run. Some years it happens and some it doesn't. 2020 was a great year with a lot of sardines but still a hit and miss. The term hit and miss has become a norm when we talk about the sardine run. As either we get the sardines or we don't or even when we get them we get the fish or we don't. Or well, the chance of landing bigger fish in the sardine run is small and only a few bigger fish gets landed. There are so many factors that play a part in you landing the fish. The first and most important is what you can control and that's your tackle you use. Making sure that your traces, leaders, your main line or braid, the rods and the reels are of standard to handle these bigger fish because there's no chance you can say what you're going to hook. Ray Thompson also got stuck on some fish and ended up losing the fish he hooked as well. Okay guys, the ideal thing is with a sardine run you, you look for where they're netting. You make your way there. Uh, 200 pound minimum seal, just fishing 112 or 13 hour circle. Hook two sardines on there, secure them if you can. And hold on tight. <laughs> Gonna use some cable ties. There are still more nets being pulled up, so we might have a, quite a bit of action here still this morning. Okay, just so they don't come off and then we'll just clip them. Gonna love them. You just want to get into the blue water, just past the foam and sand. That's where they move up and down. All these sorts have come out of the net that wash down the beach. They pick them up and hopefully your bait's there. Eventually getting all my stuff together, I managed to get a bait in. And it wasn't a minute and I got pulled flat. Which looked like a really good fish, initially taking 10 to 30 meters of line. And then I managed to somehow stop it with a dogfight. Thick enough braid and a proper drag can be on your side, but there are other influencing factors 
Like how strong the fish is, you hook, not necessarily how big it is. Some of them have eaten so much swords already that they can't get away properly. And I think this must have been one of those. A big fat female, estimated around 260 plus. And I managed to get it to the lip quite quickly. But with everyone having a good tussle with sharks on their own, no one was close enough to land it. And all the chaos with the shark swimming right in front of us quickly parted my line. But what a great taste and start of 2020 sardine run. That felt like another shark swimming to my line. And that's normal with a sardine run. But I kept it on the lip here. It was a big, big fish. But if you lock up properly with proper braid, they can't go anywhere. Yeah, it swam into my main line, yeah? There's a lot of them on the lip. You see there? Something cut the main, my main braid, my main line. Now this must be the most exciting type of fishing. When the sardines get netted and the sharks come right up on shore, as it happened this morning at Pennington. Sometimes you can literally sight fish and pick the fish you want to hook. And this was no different. What a great start. Several guys got stuck into some really good opponents. That's a lot. If you want to be a fisherman, you must enjoy the life with no wife. <laughs> yeah guys, it's a wild down here at Peddington. A good couple of nets. I see a lot of edibles like tuna and the shark species are coming. Yeah. Now I'm going to do something simple. Figure of eight because I don't have the time. Let me catch your leader there. Kelsa River. Put the river on the braid. After Jace managed to get the nets and all the crates sorted the way it should be, he joined us on the beach and quickly got a bait in the water. Now guys, after a month of scrambling, chasing the fish, we finally got to get some cast in. The last two weeks was all drone bait. I think it's the first cast bait for the sardine run. And yeah, one or two sharks around, some big boys. Let's check if we can get a bite. I'm sitting right behind the net here. The ideal place to be. Hopefully, it comes around the corner. There's been a couple of guys who fish, no one has landed this yet. But I'm going to be the first to land one. Sad, I need to fulfill my wishes. <laughs> were taken out. The activity became less and less, which gave you a better chance to actually land a fish. Now one of the real busy bodies on the beach was Craig Bashford, and he was rewarded with a really good catch. Some great catches were made that day, but in ratio of fish lost, only a few.
June 16th. Uh, another day for the sardine run. Uh, we out here at Amkababa. Uh, there's a few boats out. Uh, there's some shoals spotted. Uh, we're just waiting for the guys to start netting. And if you take a look around, you'll see a lot of guys are uh, waiting with the tackle ready to put a shot and to obviously record their personal best catch. Uh, so stay tuned. And uh, remember when you come down, carry your mask and just be safe. And uh, don't forget to subscribe to our ASFN channel. Take care. And the next day we got out, the action was at Umgababa, where Jason there managed to get a couple of nets closer to the bay. Several pockets of swords were right in front of us in the drain, but the bank at the back was quite shallow still, not allowing too many sharks to come over. Still there was a bit of action, with quite a few sharks hooked, and very few success stories again. But even though the landing of the bigger fish weren't playing the part as we hoped for, it was still extremely exciting. one of the safest areas to fish so midday we decided to move on and see where else we can find some action. Scott Burrow was where it was happening but the amount of people vehicles and boats that was already there made it very difficult to even get close to the action which resulted in us looking rather for a bite to eat after the morning's action. Later that afternoon we quickly went through to Pennington again to see if there was any action. But everything was still happening at Scottborough and we called it the day. Now over the 2020 sardine run, the most phenomenal catch by rod and reel off the beach was from Eugen Govender. Using a drone to take out the bait at Pennington Beach, he got a phenomenal catch of a grey shark that measured 295 centimeters pre-caudal length that converted to a staggering 390 kilograms by far the biggest fish caught in the 2020 sardine run short on the hills of Sunil Piarlal that broke the 400 kilo bracket in Transkai some time ago Eugene Governor is also an ASFN ambassador and a specialist on the drone side, heading up Sky Anglers. For any expert advice, guidance or assistance, Eugene is always helpful to assist any anglers interested in drone fishing. Well done Eugene on a prize catch this year, a benchmark many will chase and try to beat. Thank you all for watching ASFN. Please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that bell notification button to be notified every time we upload a video. It also helps us a lot if you like the video and feel free to comment should you have any suggestions for future content.